I think it's the first time these worlds have been brought together in this way, certainly. But, I'm, I'm, but we're all art lovers, so I think it'll be fine. I'm not expecting violence, physical violence. There's quite an archive here of the great and the good, or good, bad and the ugly, really, from the last hundred years. It's actually quite an interesting picture of British society. In a way, for me, this is a bit like the factory. So it's the kind of place you probably would have liked to have come to, and, and you would love to have seen all these pictures. This, I love this. It always works, <laughs> doing this. The title of the show is Love is Enough, which is a book by William Morris. With an exhibition, as I'm sure you know, you need a really positive, strong title, I think. And I thought that was a great title. And uh, it's quite well holding as well, I think, as a title, I felt. Very simple. It's going to be at Modern Art Oxford, opening the 6th of December, we think. And does it have a subtitle? No. Well, Andy Warhol, William Morris. Is that the way around? Andy Warhol, and William Morris? I haven't Both decided. And and we'll see how tonight goes. <laughs> but I think, uh, I think it'll be William Morris, Andy Warhol. Okay. Andy constantly had to try to reinvent himself to stay in the public <coughs> mindset. And one of his tactics, of course, for doing that was to hang out with the younger artists of that very moment, Herring and Basquiat and Clemente, doing collaborations with them making sure that he was still vital to the art world. Do you think, though, he was trying to reflect and capture the spirit? Because what Morris was very much trying to do with his art and his publishing was to change the world. I know that sounds grand and over mm. the top, but that was mm. absolutely his ambition, to give people a view of how things could be. So who is this by? Whenever people and civilizations get degenerate and materialistic, they always point to their outward beauty and riches. I'm not sure. I would go William Morris on that one. Andy Warhol. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't think art should be for a select few. I think it should be for the mass of people. Morris said something along those lines. Yeah, that's Maybe Morris. they both Warhol did. Warhol said something along those lines too, but not in that. It's actually Andy Warhol. <laughs> I think it is desirable that the artist and what is technically called the designer should practically be one. He thought that, but this wording sounds like it might be Warhol as well. It must clearly be Andy Warhol. It's William Morris, of course. <laughs> <laughs> On the face of it, these men seem to have absolutely nothing in common. But actually, I think there's absolutely tons they have in common. Both of them were very, very interested in how their works were made, in the system of how a factory is set up, how a studio is set up. How's that? Can you hear anything? How's that? There. And they were both really printmakers as well, and commercial artists, and fine artists at the same time. Both of them had these quite wild fantasy lives as children. Morris was obsessed with medieval England and knights and in armour and so on, had his own suit of armour. Warhol was obsessed with Hollywood. Both of them really obsessed with these worlds of mythology. Turn, anyway. Okay, we're ready for another big turn, anyway. Okay, we need it a bit closer so I can press the button. There we go. It's not going to fit, is it? Right. That's it. I think you've got a bit more in the corner. Oh, hang on. Oh, it's in the shape it's... we're in. on that. That's right. Yeah. 
You're looking at like a picture of it that big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it fits in and then it rotates 390 degrees. Yeah. A vacuum cleaner engineer fits what's connected to this knob, essentially. Um, and we've learnt through long trialling out of different words that what he's fitted is called a potentiometer. And that affects the speed at which the motor runs, which means we can speed it up or slow it down, which reduces or increases the suction. So that's it turned down to low suction. Yeah, it's revolting. They're wool and silk. There's some camel hair and some mohair within the, the works. So all of those have different uh, tensions and braking strengths. So we, we need to make sure we're treating them all as gently as we can. They have not routinely been vacuumed. So they've got a big build-up of dust and dirt on the surface. Presumably when they were in someone's house, people were smoking and... Yes, exactly. When they originally they, people were smoking, they would have had coal fires, yeah. gas lighting, all of those create a lot of um, particulate Pots. material. Animals running around. He's very andro androgynous, isn't he, Galahad? He's not like rough at all as, a, as nights go. All the knights I know are really rough blokes, but... Oh, we're off a bit. Yeah. Back slightly. Maybe you should go on that side. Yeah. Possibly, OK. So one of the big problems with tapestries is we assume they're square, and generally yeah. they aren't. All right, you got it? Yep, brilliant. All right. Love is Enough was almost Morris's desperate notion at that moment in his personal life, when love certainly wasn't enough. Everything was going wrong in William Morris's emotional life at that moment, and yet he chose to use that as a title of his verse epic. The original weavings were two sets made for very specific houses and they tended to be hung actually quite densely so that they were sort of stacked uh, and so you effectively got this whole wall of, of tapestry telling the story. Are you worried it's going to clash with the wallpaper? It won't clash with the wallpaper because even if it, it doesn't matter if it clashes, this whole show is full of clashes so it doesn't really matter. If you look at the wallpaper, it's actually quite a tight pattern and it's quite, it's full of different colours, so it's almost, it could go with anything, anything could go, go with that. So, no. I mean, this wallpaper, can you see the skull in it? I think it's a skull. Look at that. The two eyes, the head and the mouth. I mean, the, the, the jaw. Creepy, isn't it? Morris, if for nothing else, is noted for his wallpaper. Wallpaper is a very sort of democratic art form, and of course it's a factory-produced thing. You can, if you're a bit of a purist, say that Morris has been so popularised as to be kind of completely dumbed down, but actually the, the nature of his design is something that's extremely enduring and extremely popular. A lot of people are completely familiar with Morris's designs without even knowing that Morris ever did them. I'm going to read out some quotes by William Morris and Andrew Warhol, and I want you afterwards to tell me who you think said this. So, for me, I want to make art for the mass of the people, for everyone. Warhol. Actually, you did much better than the team was here, though. <laughs> yeah, it's meant to be a big statement. We're going to have a settee or something here for people to sit on and look at it, watch it, almost like you'd watch a film.
I think the concept of the exhibition is slight, people are slightly puzzled by it, but they're open-minded. I think you have to be open-minded if you're into art and culture. You, you want to embrace, you want to learn things, and, and maybe this has an interest to them. So I think it's, it's, uh, it's intriguing. I'm certainly always looking for unusual connections or trying to connect things I like a lot or people I admire or follow a lot and give them something in common. So it makes sense for me. But also it makes more sense of art, really, in making art and maybe in the fact that artists are more or less the same throughout history. They're the same kind of people. They're the same driven, curious people. And we'll have Liz Taylor looking at it from there uh, later today. So oh, yeah, Liz Taylor's going there with Shirley Temple. I'm glad we put it on there. The background is, is wallpaper. I'm really glad. <laughs>